Hey, this is Jim Remley here with eRealEstateCoach.com. I'm here with Mike Cuevas, and he is uh, a marketing and branding expert. I was been had the pleasure to be on his show a while back. Invited him to be on our show to give us all of his expert guidance on everything related to marketing and branding. Thanks for being on the show, Mike. Thanks for having me, Jim, and hello, everybody. So, uh, yeah, kind of give us your uh, quick synopsis, your, your background. Sure. Um, I was uh, real estate was the only job I ever had. 2002, I was an agent, graduated from college um, and did it for about 17 years, give or take. Um, a couple years ago, almost three years ago now, I moved to San Diego and launched what we now call a real estate marketing dude, uh, which is a video production company for uh, real estate agents. So we script, edit, distribute, multi-purpose um, video content built around their personal brand. Um, and they're educated, you know, like the real estate type content. So we create content for people. Nice. Um, you guys were ahead of the curve then. Cause so three years ago, it wasn't quite as big. Now it's huge. Everybody's going video, right? Yeah, it is. We, we, uh, it's really, it's not really an option anymore. Um, right. people are like, Hey, it's not like a matter of, are you going to get on video? It's like, you don't really have an option anymore. I mean, every business has to do it cause it's just the way that we have to communicate. Like, especially right now, like look at, um, COVID like what happened. Mm -hmm. Um, if we can't write for three months, people couldn't get face to face. The only face to face you're having are in zoom meetings like this or the content you're putting out there. So, um, I actually doubled my ad spend during this time and it worked and it paid off because, um, there are so many eyeballs and that's what this is. Attention, 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 mm -hmm. attention. What do you think is the, uh, you know, the, the difference between somebody just getting on video versus somebody that's an expert like you, what's, what's the biggest gap there? I mean, what, if, what do people miss? Practice. Yeah. Practice. practice. Yeah. I mean, like I'd be really good at um, being a BMX writer if I did it every day. Right. <laughs> um, I, I can't surf either, but I bet you if I tried and I did it five days a week, I would probably get into it as well. Um, yeah. But ultimately, even before that is figuring out sort of what should you create content on? And that's going to be different per individual. Um, when we're creating video, um, people always wonder and focus so much on what we're saying as yeah. opposed to how we're saying it. Right. And that's the major difference because um, I like video. I'm not a shy guy, right? Yeah. However, I would be shy if you put me uh, doing dance moves on video, wouldn't I? Right, right, right. Um, it's uncomfortable. So it's all in most of its mindset. Mm -hmm. um, but two is just strategy. Like once you figure out what is right for you, um, it's, it's simple. Like, and everybody has a strategy different yeah. people, analytical is different than an outgoing type of personality, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it's just about finding what works for you. Do you find that um, like the no, the, the more of the trend towards like no edit video, just real raw video is, is uh, getting more engagement or do you find it's better to have a mix of like professional polished stuff or what do you, what's your feeling on that? I think that three years ago, you could have just done Facebook live or two years ago and yeah. you could have just done them um, and just got away with anything. But now because everybody's doing the talking head videos, that's the need for editing mm -hmm. and um, time to sort of step up your production quality. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. it's, it's attention based, right? Though now that everyone's doing it in three years, we're going to be have, we're going to have to be doing something totally different than what the uh, norm is today. Right. You know, so there's so a lot you're, of uh, different ways to go to go. About when you're it. when you're coaching people, I mean, is it? Um, do, do, are you recommending they do it every day, every once a week? No, it, um, different uses for different purpose, right? Mm -hmm. um, mainly, the core of what we do is is really um, build consistent video content around their SOI and their local community. Mm -hmm. um, so when we're doing that, it's more. You don't need more than two a month. Wow, like, because you don't need more content. You need better impact. Right. If the goal of my video is to generate attention, sometimes spending $2,000 on a production video that is going to generate 30,000 views is well worth it. Right. So people look at video cost because it's not so much, and it's, it's an investment into your own personal brand and the impact it has. Like nobody knows um, why people make purchasing decisions. Um, mm -hmm. Like you never can control that same in my world. Like I can tell you that when I'm everywhere all the time and I'm running my ads, I'm getting more demos than when I'm not. Mm -hmm. right. right. So, um, it's just the common sense in the sense like that. So if we're, if the goal is to stay on top of mind, which I believe in a real estate agents or any referral based business, it's top of mind amongst that referral base, mm -hmm. uh, which is really the core of our strategy. Um, 
that I don't need to fight for a lead. This is not sales. This is marketing. This is not advertising. This is marketing. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're not the content I'm creating. I don't want anything other than for it to generate an impression impact on somebody. I want someone to, I want to make someone laugh, (laughs) right? Right. That's more impactful than um, making them cry. Yeah. 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 (laughs) I mean, (laughs) maybe not, but uh, yeah, they like it better, but (laughs) it's attention versus lead generation. And that's the difference. Yeah. Um, Now, to have videos that you go out and do like transactional videos, like for open houses and Facebook lives. I love that because your story, but I like doing it in the form of a story and not so much of a sales pitch. Like for example, if you're doing an open house and the house has the best man cave in the world, then start off by saying something along that. Do you want to see the world's best man cave? Oh, by the way, this is the world's best man cave. And then go into, (laughs) Oh, by the way, we're at the open house. Right. Um, so I like video for that, that services. What I don't like it for anymore, at least for real estate is like for, um, I've been in the business for 35 years or mm-hmm. here's the market update. Yeah. Um, or just stuff that, that doesn't really generate any eyeballs. Mm-hmm. It's not, it's not interesting enough. Not yeah. interesting enough. Yeah. And that's right. really, um, you got to look at your content that way. If, if your content isn't being watched, then what's the point of creating it? Right. So when you are coaching your clients, is it, uh, are they, it's going to, you're talking about putting it in front of your sphere of influence. Is it designed for when you're doing these two more higher level videos per month, is it designed for advertising to bring new business or is it designed to be designed to be in front of your SOI or both? Both. Um, right. being in front of your new business, your SOI will bring a new business and right. it just, it's none of this is going to be, um, theory. It's all mathematical. So we know that um, if I'm going to break down the numbers, we know that 10 to 15% of the population moves each and every year. We also know that 100% of the population knows or at least one person in their life that they can refer someone to. And 72% of people close with the first agent they meet with. Mm-hmm. So of closing statistics, um, it's like over 80% come from referrals, repeat clients, uh, people you met in front of an open house, a sign, or you already know. Mm-hmm. It's over 80% of business. So for me, if I'm running a, if I'm an agent and I'm running for real estate and I'm, I'm in real estate, me not doing this, I'm missing mm-hmm. 80% of business. Right. If that makes sense. Yeah. yeah, no, you So, totally get it. and, and it's just like, and it, it makes like when people think about it, they're always so worried about what they're saying versus how they're saying it. I'm more mm-hmm. worried about how many eyeballs I'm getting because I know out of, in, when we get into the gist of it, I know that if I have an email list of 200 people, um, I know that if I get 40% of people to open my email, video email, I know mm-hmm. that 10 to 15% of them are moving. Mm-hmm. I know that 100% of them have a referral for me. If right. I have a direct mail campaign, it's nothing to do with video, just another add-on. I have 150 people on the direct mail campaign. I'm touching all of them once a month. Well, 10 to 15 of them are moving this year. 150 of them have a referral for me. Mm-hmm. On social, my Facebook feed is nothing more than extensions of my database. Like, who hangs out on my personal page? It's not like a bunch of creeps. It's the people I know. Like they all live somewhere, right? right. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but Instagram is just another version of my database. My yeah. business page, another version of my database. LinkedIn is just another extension of connections and database. Mm-hmm. But we're farming. We all yeah. understand farming, but I don't know why we don't farm our database. Right. It's the most important audience to farm. Yeah. Like there's marketing and then there's lead generation. This mm-hmm. is not lead generation. This is don't forget I exist. Do you measure, when you're measuring your performance of your videos, are you measuring it by like on Facebook, you, would you measure by like engagement, like the number of people watching, or do you measure it by clicks and that kind of thing? I would say views, engagement. Um, mm-hmm. The thing with the way I'm explaining this is that there is, it's very hard to measure. Um, yeah. It's not like I could go out and buy a zip code for Zillow once a month and determine if I have a positive ROI every 30 days by it. Because right. the truth is, is you don't know what impact that video has. Mm-hmm. I had a lady came on to my services today that's been following my podcast for two years. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> I never met her before. Hey, how, how, how are you doing? She's like, oh, I've been following you for two years. She knew all about me. Right. So same thing is that people don't remember um, what you do. They remember how you do it. Mm-hmm. So the whole video thing is, oh, there's that realtor. It's always on video. That, that agent is always on video. Like that's branding. Mm-hmm. So we have to be doing stuff to stick outside the box because most agents um, are commodity, at least in the eyes of the public. Yeah, I love it. So when you're, um, it's all about consistency, obviously. Do you you recommend 
they scheduled this is the day I put something out and this is the day I put something out. That's is that how you do 100%, it? Hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. No differently than you know you any um, any business that any business does the same thing. Like the easiest one is Bed Bath and Beyond or Bye Bye Baby. Mm-hmm. They have twenty percent off coupons. They farm to their database once or twice a month. No mm-hmm. one brings the coupons to the store. They're just staying on top of mind. Right. They, same coupons are being emailed to them as well. And Mm -hmm. they're all over their social media as well. They're just, you have to stay present, especially in social media. Like if you're not staying present, you're out of mind. And it's not, um, at least in real estate, I don't think it's, it's not my network's job to remember what I do. It's my job to remind them. How many of your videos, because there's a kind of a trend or at least with speakers anyway, where we talk about, you know, evergreen videos versus kind of real time videos. That's kind of data. Mm -hmm. That's going to be perishable data. That's not going to be relevant tomorrow. When you're coaching people, do you, do you have them do both? Do you have them do one versus the other mix? It's all on their, it's all in their personality. Yeah. Um, so I'll give you a couple, there's different videos for different purposes. So Mm -hmm. let's say somebody that's in the state of Florida or Texas, we're probably focused on running a YouTube strategy because they have a lot of relocations moving to those areas. So regardless of which style of video we do, we're always nurturing the SOI with it first, multi-purposing it for whatever reason, second. Mm. So if I'm running a YouTube strategy, I'm playing the optimization game. Mm-hmm. So that means that at my, I would create six or seven videos based upon moving to Orlando, for example. Or mm-hmm. if, 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 if it made sense, that very same strategy isn't going to work for like Alaska. Right. Right, right, right. Or, or like maybe like uh, Fargo, North Dakota or South Dakota or something. It's just, the search isn't there. So <laughs> right. it, it depends on different brands, right? Um, yeah. Another thing I'll see is like, say, um, someone who's buying a lot of leads. We get yeah. a lot who's very lead heavy that's relying on that. It makes a lot of sense for that team or that individual to create a real estate, a buyer series on their site or a seller series because they need that type of content to convert a stranger. Right. Right. And is that, um, and so video drips is becoming a new big thing too. So that's kind of along the same lines. You can repurpose that for your, for your video, for your drip. Yeah. Your, your real estate content, you'll repurpose for the transactional, for conversion. Mm-hmm. Um, it'll be your least engaged, but it'll be the, the most reason why people convert with you. Right. So people always, um, like imagine going to any business and them not having any content on their site that demonstrates what they do. Like that yeah. business is called out of business, right? It's not a business anymore. <laughs> My right. whole site is nothing but just content, search, yeah. content. You have the same on yours, yeah. right? It's just yeah. webinar, education, yeah, just give, 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 because it's our content that keeps us relevant. And right. content is, um, I believe, like the only way that we can really market our business right. right now, because otherwise we're just salespeople. Everything I mean, else is sales. Yeah, I mean, it's all a sales funnel is the way I look at it. Every every single thing we're doing is a sales funnel. You bring them to the top, and you're trying to get them up through the bottom at the end if you can. Yep. What about length of time of the videos? Do you have any theories on length? Yeah, well, Facebook switched their algorithm to favor of three plus minutes. Hmm. Um, you saw that happen in IG, uh, same on YouTube. So the longer length videos are actually, um, we see more, uh, it's better to be more informative, especially like for YouTube. So I like three to six minutes mm-hmm. um usually around the three and a half to five is about the strike zone maybe four thirty. yeah that's about the attention span but again it depends on what you're what it is that you're creating mm-hmm. um it, it's it, interesting it, with that too i mean you look at a guy like you know joe rogan on podcast who talks to somebody for three hours you think mm-hmm. they're not going to have that nobody's gonna have that level of attention span they do if they're interested yeah <laughs> so i mean you, you'll listen to the whole thing which i do all the time if they're interesting, right? So that's really interesting. Which uh, another question I have for you is, you know, another form of video is agents start starting to do podcasts in their markets. Um, sure. do, you, do you coach people on that too, or? I don't. I uh, here the reason why is that um, you got to be really, really committed to it. Yeah. And you gotta it. The audience is limited because I just know from my own podcast is like I think it, I, any form of media is great. Mm-hmm. But I would make it, if you're going to go a podcast on the local, I'd make it a video. I'd multi-purpose it as a video YouTube show yeah. with the podcast. And I would do it more for YouTube than podcast second, possibly. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, de- and it depends on search too. Um, if it's there, like same thing, like podcast in North Maine, 
is that going to really take off? <laughs> right. So a lot of the stuff has got to make sure that the audience has to be there. Right. Um, I had um, one gal was doing a podcast very specific on people who were like, you know, exiting a certain state. And so it was a niche. That's, that's yeah. cool. I could see something like that going. because there's a passion behind it. Right. Right. But your podcast just has to have a passion or a purpose behind it more than interest rates. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, like there's gotta be yeah. a personality to get people to catch onto it. So for certain people, yes. Mm-hmm. Um, for others and based upon where they're at, maybe not, but uh, it's hard to say. Now, I think you're seeing a lot of the younger agents, you know, that want to be influence, influencer level agents kind of drives me crazy. But um, you have these two groups of people that you got these people that will do these videos that are really, really, really raw using bad equipment. And then you've got these young agents that go out and spend, you know, five grand on equipment and try to make like a Pepsi commercial level you know, kind of thing. Where yeah. do you fall on that? I mean, what do you recommend to your in terms of equipment and stuff? Well, start with the basics. I use the same stuff that we buy our clients, which is about under like 80 bucks. Uh Um, I shoot with our cell phone. Um, Yeah. Everything we do, we do by example. Um, You don't need fancy equipment. That's not what makes a good video. It's the right story and the right editing does ultimately. So it's, I focus more on the script and the strategy than the actual equipment. Fancy equipment also just confuses the living daylights out of most people. (laughs) So what you're really doing is just creating more obstacles for yourself. Right. Uh, like gimbals, for example. I don't, you don't need a gimbal. Mm-hmm. Um, just don't be a crackhead. Right. Like if, you're shooting your, if you're shooting your camera and you're shaking it too much, like <laughs> it's so yeah. just like stuff like that, that a lot of it can be overkill. So we, we like to keep things very, very simple. Right. Um, and focus on strategy and purpose first and then back into that versus it's not about checking a box. It's about finding out what you're excited about. And that mm-hmm. you can do consistently over time that really represents and paints your true persona. What, what about that? So you brought up scripting, which is, I think, a big struggle with agents is, I don't know what the hell I'm going to say. That's number one. And secondly, do you recommend, like, you could talk off the cuff about anything, but a lot of agents aren't that, you know, aren't that talented. So do you recommend that they're, like, reading a, a teleprompter, using the teleprompter no, apps? No, opposite, uh, because you could tell most times. Yeah. Yeah. Unless you're like this, like Barack Obama type, like teleprompter expert, like where you just look like a, you know, like you're just an amazing speaker, which most people aren't. Right. Um, it's very hard to pull off the teleprompter thing, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, we have like we have over I have scripts for everything, so there's two types of scripts. Mm-hmm. If it's gonna be like about real estate, say content, mm-hmm. then we have those verbatim, and most people are going to know what their trade is. Um, I like scripting in blocks or telling stories. You know, if you're creating a business interview though, that's more of a template. Mm-hmm. So is it um, in terms of them just remembering what to say, do, you, do they just have like a, a note card in front of them, like block one, block two? No, block we three? have, I have a script for everything. We have the mm-hmm. way we have a, uh, we have templates uh, mm-hmm. for some and then we have verbatim scripts for others. I gotcha. Okay. So like, and for then, example, a script might be the top three neighborhoods in Phoenix. Yeah. All right, so we have the template, but what you say is you're really just answering your own questions. Right, got it. All right, what no one ha- what no one realizes is that the way you script is the same way you write. My kid's writing her essay right now. Mm-hmm. She's in the other room with her um, virtual teacher, and the essay um, worksheet is the same way you write a script. It's an attention getter. Yeah. There's an intro, the overlying mm-hmm. idea they call it. There's yep. the body points you're making, and then there's your outro. Gotcha. So people overcomplicate script writing, but it's the same way we're all taught to write letters as kids or us. Let's talk about the, the, the outro, which is like the close of it. Let's say, do you recommend that they close quote, quote unquote, or, or is it more? Not if you're creating branding videos, because yeah. um, you don't need to, like if I'm creating videos to build my brand, I don't need to squeeze my database. I already have their right. content. Yeah. I already have their contact. That's why they're seeing my stuff. So, um, however, if I'm creating videos for a sales script, then yes, I definitely need a call to action, mm-hmm. but I wouldn't necessarily send my database to a sales video. Right. Right. What do you find so, to be the best call to actions? Um, in terms of sales videos? Yeah. Niche. You got to be specific with what you're offering. The generalist doesn't exist. Um, or highly specialist does. Yeah. The niche does. So speak to 55 plus if that's your thing. Mm-hmm. speak to fizzbos if that's your thing yeah 
speak to, you got to speak directly to whomever it is that you're, you're talking to. It cannot be generalist. Hi, I've been selling real estate for 25 years. Who cares? <laughs> Nobody cares. <laughs> it's, it's, Hey, it's, Hey, going through a divorce sucks right now. I know exactly what you're going through. My yeah. wife did the same thing to me, but that's why I did something about it. Right. <laughs> that's good. I'm going to put that in front of divorce. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's good. Um, do you do you find that in terms of if it's a sales video and you are making a pitch with a call to action that you should offer something like a free report, a free this, a free that? Is do you find that to be yeah. the most effective or just a, like well, hey contact me? Traditional online marketing, yes. Yeah. But again, for referral marketing, it's a little bit different. Yeah. Um, so yes, you have to have something to give away. Otherwise, what are you exchanging their lead for? Right. So for lead generation, yes, you need a lead magnet. You need an offer. You need something. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're playing, like, again, if you're, I believe that well, I'd like to get your opinion on this. If, if I wouldn't feel comfortable sending my, like my SOI database to a landing page, mm -hmm. for example, I would think that would just be very cold. Yeah, like I agree. if I, you know what I mean? Like squeeze yeah. them, like download this free report. Like what? Like, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. So, yeah. So that content just like, Oh wait, stay tuned to see what we're going to be at the next episode. Thanks for watching mm -hmm. later. Like that's it. Right. Yeah. Don't need to do much because it's more of a soft close. So if I went through an outro script, it's like, and by the way, if you know anyone looking to buy or sell within the Chicagoland area, please feel free to share my name with them. And thank you so much for your direct business and all of your referrals. Now, thanks for watching. See you again next time. It can right. be very small, subliminally like that. Mm -hmm. And it's about repetition. They're saying yeah. it over and over and over again. <coughs> yep. What do, you, what do you recommend? I know this is a loaded question, but what do you recommend on the spend side of it? Um, do you have any Not theories much. on that? not yeah. much at all yeah i like mean what? if you're for ads for database yeah, yeah. If you're gonna someone's database isn't gonna be more than a thousand people right. generally yeah especially if it's soi and even if you're farming great two thousand which by facebook ads isn't a lot of money mm -hmm. so if you're just gonna splash your content out five ten bucks a day for yeah. a week mm -hmm. what do you uh, when you're when you're, if you're buying uh, leads, you got to generate, you got to pay more. I mean, if you're going to go lead generation, you got to spend a lot more. You're right. going to have $1,500 to $2,500 a month in ad. Yeah, I totally agree. Now, do you find that agents are are, um, are trying to measure ROI? And, no. And they just, they, they don't just know, don't, know they what that means. They can't even do it. So, yeah, and I'll, I'll talk crap about myself because I'm the worst with ROI, I'm too high D to look at analyzing and cost analysis and all that. Mm -hmm. I've been forced um, to do so within the last six months with real estate marketing dude, but um, it's um, nobody measures ROI. Nobody. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, that's part of the problem. <laughs> right. Um, like it's crazy on how much um, someone will spend on something that makes them feel better versus actually works. Mm -hmm. and, lead generation is a perfect example of that yeah i see people spending ten thousand dollars on zips generating leads but you look at the bottom line it's really i'd rather spend two thousand on database and i bet you do a lot more oh no question yeah so here's another question that just me me personally i have this question uh and i struggle with this so you know we've had fancy intro and outro cards built for us for my mm -hmm. company and many agents are starting to have fancy, you know, moving graphics built for them. I just watched one just a second ago, right before I got on this. Do you, but I do know that you have like this one or two or three second like window where you're going to catch people or not. Do you find that those intro cards hurt you or help you? Hurt. Hurt. So no intro card. You go straight, Dep straight depending in. Depending how you're using it. Tension yeah. getter and then straight in. Yeah. So your attention, you're your wasting headline. 10 seconds up front. You could do yeah. it at the end because they're already right. gone. Right. But I mean, does that, does it, does the intro, like having your logo fly across with some cheesy, like sparkle yeah. graphics really yeah. do anything for anyone? Right. The better intro is showing you eating a hot dog, doing the, you know, that that's more personable or showing you with your kid really quick for a second. is a mm -hmm. lot more personable and better, but ultimately your attention getter, you're right, is the most important part of the video. Um, Facebook came out and said about 75% of people decide if they're going to watch the rest of it in the first seven to 10 seconds, if I'm not mistaken. Wow. So that first upfront time is very valuable. And I've actually, I've done this before accidentally on videos um, where we opened up in a black screen. Mm -hmm. Just that little thing killed the video. Wow. 
because it wasn't enough. It was it was too dark at no, first. Fast. Just, yeah, 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 it was it was well, it was three. It was like one, two, three, four. Then it faded. That four seconds killed it. Yeah, you had to fade in instead of, <laughs> instead of just opening. We had so, one where we did a. Here's another real cool one. We had one yeah, where we yeah. did a. Um, you remember the movie Anchorman? Yeah. And um, this is perfect with Facebook. That shows how people don't listen to sound on Facebook. A lot of them. Um, mm -hmm. Awesome video. It was like a whole Anchorman recreation. We spent a lot of time on it. It didn't do that well because the opening scene is a drone shot showing the skyline of San Diego. Oh. And it just looks like any other realtor video. You had to tear up the sound to hear the copy that we wrote over it. Right. So uh, it was interesting to see that, but that it didn't have an attention getter because it, mm -hmm. it was the voiceover of the newscast. That, that's another question is, do you find that it's, it's, it's important to have a face like you in it immediately? Yeah. Or do you find like I open on a front door, or like you said, the man cave, you open on the man cave. Or do you, are you, you're front and center right out of the gate? It all depends on the attention getter. It's relative to what, what the video is going to be. But there mm -hmm. should be a teaser. Every, yeah. every TV show has one. And so the teaser is what's going to keep them watching. It's that seven to ten seconds as the lead in. The, you're the, saying news, what you're about. the news does it. Mm -hmm. Look, what does the news do before every end segment? They tease you with the attention getter for the next segment so that you stay and watch it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, every single time. And I, what, I'm, what I see sometimes people doing now is they'll use the teaser, like, we're going to talk about this, but stay to the end because you want to catch this. Do you recommend that or no? Is that too cheesy? Some, it just, some you can. It just depends on delivery. Yeah. Um, I saw one, one like, coach out there the other day, and he was, it was so cheesy, like, some of the, the pitch. And it was just, like, rehearsed. It just felt like used car, you know. So right. um, it's all in what you could pull off, but ultimately you just have to be yourself. Mm-hmm. What about um, graphics on screen? Do you form against them? Does it matter? I like them, depending on yeah. what you're talking about. Um, mm -hmm. I think text adds a lot to it. Um, anything informational, that's why I like green screen, because it's easier to teach on it. Mm -hmm. um, but anything you're doing informational, I like green screen for that. And the more informational, typically the more text. Yeah. Or graphics. Mm -hmm. do, you, uh, do you guys recommend an editor, like a, a video yes. editor? Which one? I mean, I'm biased because, uh, well, us, real estate market. Oh, you. <laughs> um, <laughs> Got but it. But I'm, I'm, I'm biased, but it just depends. You don't have to have an editor, but, um, you know, the, at the end of the day, it's the way your content looks demonstrates a lot about your brand. Yeah. So it's like, Absolutely. do you want to wear, um, do you want to wear sweatpants to work? Mm -hmm. Or do you want to wear a suit? Well, how do you want your content to come? It's, it's very similar because that's the conversation nowadays. Mm -hmm. is that it's focused around social positioning brand is everything right now it's all we have which, which is interesting well I'm just the brand element alone a lot of agents have agent brands now I mean, that's mm -hmm. a big thing do you recommend that they have their agent brand like in the lower corners or all always. the time the whole always. time the videos on entire time yep yeah. because what they see is more impactful than anything that'll come off of what you see what they see is more impactful than anything you'll ever that what they'll say yeah People uh, perceive and communicate through uh, storytelling and pictures. They have since the Egyptians in caves. Mm -hmm. And that's not changed. It's just the way God made us. We're wired that way. So we could read and, and perceive pictures a lot faster than anything that is told to us. What about um, music in the background? Do you recommend Super it? Super important. Happy, yes, you have to have music. Music sets the whole mood of the video. Mm -hmm. um, music is a, one of the most important parts of the video. Yeah, it gets the tempo, the excitement the tempo. level. Just yeah. a sad to happy can be two different soundtracks. Yeah. And yeah. sound does a lot for video. Right. Love it. What about um, closed captioning? Do you close caption all videos? I, we are starting to now, yes. Um, uh -huh. Depends on what platform you're using them. Mm -hmm. So, like, if you're on YouTube, like, people go on YouTube to listen to sound. I think it's, like, mm -hmm. 85% or 90% of the videos on YouTube, they are played with sound on. Mm -hmm. um, but Facebook, it's the opposite. Like 80% of them have no sound. Really? So wow. you, need the, you need the captions on, on that. So yeah. it depends on your use, but general practice, I'm starting to see people do them on all of, all of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Gotcha. We're getting a and lot more you, requests to do them on all. We're just starting to do it. Do you use um, an outside company to do that? Or do you like yeah, use you Facebook? Could, we use uh, Rev. Yeah, Rev. So yep. Rev.com. Mm -hmm. And you could get your transcription for a couple cents. I mean, they're cheap, like a yeah. dollar or two. But um, you do a lot to add up. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
what, what, like, what's your best recommendations for agents, um, you know, during COVID? I mean, is there anything that's changed for COVID versus non-COVID? I mean, pre-COVID? Oh, we'll it? No, it's, it's even more reason um, to get out there. Yeah. Um, the, the content doesn't, it's not about telling, it's about reminding. So mm -hmm. we, are doing, we are creating content on recipes. Yeah. Home recipes during COVID for, with mm -hmm. people. Um, content on businesses being promoted that change the way they're selling their services and featuring them during COVID. So there's always something to do. It doesn't matter because it's attention based. Right. Love it. Um, what about in, in like Instagram, IGTV, um, you know, you're, we're doing the, you know, the vertical video versus the horizontal video, that whole thing. Mm -hmm. Do you shoot two separate videos or you just edit it into one? No, I'm just doing um, horizontal and I'm adding it into my playlists into IGTV and then multi-purposing our playlists. Um, mm -hmm. No differently than we, we are on YouTube. Gotcha. Um, okay. I haven't seen any, people say do it the other way where at the same time for us, I haven't seen my personal feed has, I haven't seen any difference. Mm -hmm. um, and most people aren't going to have the capacity um, to do it to do that ways. yeah we were before igtv switch because now you could just hit the format and you just put it in landscape view and you can see the whole thing fine right. but before we were doing that um that mm -hmm. was even before we used to have to cut up the videos to 60 second clips for our clients so they could post clip one clip two clip three so it's got yeah. a lot friendly towards longer videos definitely. longer videos <laughs> you can't ask me what people want videos. yeah yeah yep what about like uh, new formats like TikTok and these kinds of companies? They're here to stay. They're coming. Um, yeah. I'm still learning it. My daughter's on TikTok. I mean, I get it. I just haven't had time to actually focus on it. Um, mm -hmm. It will be a part of my business this year. Mm -hmm. um, they're, they're here. I mean, it's yeah. just like Facebook was. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that platform is going anywhere. Yeah. You think that one's here to stay? TikTok? Yep. Positive yeah. Positive it's to stay. Any others out there? I mean, Snapchat. No, nope, that's it right now. Snapchat seems. I think TikTok. I think Stories took Snapchat out. Snapchat is like dead. I think they're gone. Way out for the most oh. part. Yeah. I don't see much engagement. I don't even hear anything about it. Yeah, uh, it's interesting, Facebook, isn't it? Facebook, Instagram, YouTube's big, and and uh, TikTok. LinkedIn for video. Uh, LinkedIn's good on video. Um, yeah. It just. Any social platform, though, is just a matter of if you use it or not. Like LinkedIn, right. like I, I just stopped posting on LinkedIn because I don't use it. Yeah. It's not because I don't think it's a good platform, just because I just don't go on it. Like, so I just decided to do YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram, and mm -hmm. TikTok, and that's just all I was going to do. Of those, of those three platforms, I mean, Facebook, Instagram, let's say TikTok, LinkedIn, all of those, and YouTube, which one do you find is the best for, for like lead gen, and the and and or the best for is SOI. SOI is Facebook. Facebook for sure. For me, yeah, Facebook, uh, inst Facebook, Instagram, in that order. What about what about um, for lead gen? Lead gen is probably going to be YouTube, mm -hmm. um, but referral gen is Facebook social. Oh yeah, which is where you're going to get your biggest yeah return on investment anyway. Yeah, got it. Okay. All right, my friend, you gave us a lot of bombs sir. Thank you so much for all those nuggets. Where can people find you, yeah. learn from you, get coached by you? Sure. Give us yes. all the um, So if you guys wanted to visit my website, thank you for that. Um, it's realestatemarketingdude.com, realestatemarketingdude.com. Uh, we script edit, distribute videos for people in the real estate industry, whether you're a lender, investor, or realtor. And um, if not, we will train your videographer how to do it. We'll um, give you all our scripts or access to it. So we either show you how to do it or we do it for you. Um, either way, if you're into that um, creative sort of outside the box content creation, that's all we do. Love it. Thank awesome. you so Thank much. Thank you so I much, Mike. It. Absolutely. Have a great day, my friend. Yeah, see you too, buddy. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye.